love it or hate it, there's no denying that the Twilight Saga was an absolute worldwide juggernaut. Here's what the cast looks like today, and what they've been up to since retiring the fake fangs, sparkly skin, and terrifying yellow eyes. By the time Breaking Dawn Part 2 was released, viewers finally got to see Bella Swan and Edward Cullen's daughter, Renesmee. We're lucky that half vamps age fast, as actor Mackenzie Foy quickly filled the role. Although she was still a tween when Breaking Dawn Part 2 came out, Foy has since grown into a proper A-list star, as well as landing roles in both 2013's The Conjuring and 2014's Interstellar. The celeb also snagged the lead role in the Disney Plus 2020 adaptation of Black Beauty. Foy gushed to pop culturalist. I'm a massive fan of the original book, and I was just really, really excited. After I read the script, I was just sobbing because of how perfect it was. So aside from starring in blockbuster flicks, what else does Foy have planned on the horizon? The actor mused. I hope to keep doing film. Hopefully to one day start directing would be amazing. Surprisingly enough, Dakota Fanning managed to bypass the turbulent years many former Hollywood child stars experience as they grow older, and has maintained steady employment well into her adult life. In Twilight New Moon, Fanning portrayed Jane, a powerful vampire of the Volturi, reprising her role in both Eclipse and Breaking Dawn Part II. In 2019, the star landed a role in Quentin Tarantino's highly acclaimed Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Fanning told Collider, a huge dream of mine was to work with Quentin Tarantino. I've wanted that since I saw Kill Bill for the first time. Well, the funny thing is I auditioned for Kill Bill when I was little to be the bride's daughter. <gasps> Besides becoming a Tinseltown heavyweight, it looks like the actor is prestigious in a different regard, too. According to Ancestry.com historians, Dakota and her younger sister Elle are both descendants of King Edward III, who ruled England for nearly 50 years from 1330 to 1376. It was only a few years after playing the timid Angela Weber in the Twilight Saga that Christian Serratos landed the role of the plucky Rosita Espinosa in The Walking Dead. As it turns out, playing Rosita on the hit AMC series served as a fantastic base for Serratos' next mega-project, portraying the iconic Selena Quintanilla in Netflix's Selena the Series. Speaking to Complex, the actor dished about her quote, valuable experience on The Walking Dead, saying, Being there for so long was helpful for me going into Selena. Being a part of that ensemble cast is incredible. Of course, stepping into the shoes of the late Queen of Tejano music made Serratos a pinch nervous. The star told People, I've been listening to her since I was way below single digits. Serratos ended up impressing the biggest critics of all, Quintanilla's family. Selena's brother praised the actor, telling TMZ he thought she quote, did an outstanding job. Bryce Dallas Howard made her Twilight debut in 2010's Eclipse as Victoria, replacing actor Rochelle Lefebvre. Since starring in the vampy teen franchise, Bryce has been a part of quite a few big-name projects, yet she ultimately decided to follow in her famous father's footsteps and try her hand at directing. Anything worthwhile mentioning, you ask? Well, there's The Mandalorian, for starters. The star explained to free the work. One of the reasons why I was hired for The Mandalorian was because series creator Jon Favreau himself is an actor. Jon knew that I had been exposed to many different versions of how to approach problem solving and running a set. As for the biggest challenge Bryce had to face being a part of such a cult TV show, getting her young children to keep mom on Baby Yoda. Every single day when they were going back to school, before school, I would say, who do we not talk about today? And they'd be like, <laughs> baby! In the Twilight Saga, Michael Sheen plays Arrow, the dangerous leader of the Volturi, as Jessica Toomer gushed for Uprox. Sheen basked in the camp of it all. He over-enunciated, he exaggerated Arrow's mercurial nature with rapid eye movement, twitchy physicality, and shrieking giggle fits. Simply put, Arrow was a memorable character, albeit one that fits into the star's array of bizarre performances that span decades. Although Sheen has maintained a steady workflow since playing the crazed vampire, it's not his only passion, and he's not just seen in front of the camera anymore. The actor told The Guardian in 2019, 
The truth of it is that I'm trying to find a different kind of balance in my life between acting and the non-acting side of things. So working around social issues, political with a small p. In 2020, Sheen got creative yet again and took part in Staged, a quote, Zoom-based lockdown comedy, which NME writes has revolutionized post-COVID telly. He tells me you're not playing nicely. Well, it's been a tough few weeks. Is that right? Yeah, we've been through a lot. Taylor Lautner wasn't the only shape-shifting heartthrob in the Twilight franchise. There was also Boo Boo Stewart, better known to Twihards as Seth Clearwater. Stewart's popularity didn't end after the teen flicks either. That said, his experience didn't exactly solidify his status as an A-lister. Stewart told V-Man, In your head you think, oh, I'm in Twilight, everything's going to change automatically, but that really didn't happen. You still have to audition and you still have to put in the work. It looks like Stewart's hard work definitely paid off. He landed the role of Jay in Disney's Descendants, reprising it for both the sequel and third installment. He followed that with 2020's Let Him Go, starring opposite Diane Lane and Kevin Costner. Even amid a global pandemic, Stewart has kept busy. An artist as well, the actor told Boys by Girls. The way I dealt with frustrations was by creating. I love making things. That's what I like to do, so I went back to that. Justin Chan may have just played the dorky Eric Yorkie in the Twilight franchise, but the actor seriously hit his stride after the popular saga came to a close. He starred in 21 and Over with Miles Teller and helped form BGA, Boys Generally Asian, a parody K-pop band founded with YouTuber Ryan Higa. In 2017, one of the comedy group's singles even eclipsed actual K-pop supergroup BTS when it shot straight to number one on the iTunes K-pop chart. Sean's work off-camera is even more impressive. In 2017, he raised over $56,000 on Kickstarter for a feature film about the Korean experience during the LA riots that he wrote, directed, and starred in. The gritty drama is an achievement for Chan, as it rejects Hollywood's stereotype of Asian men. Twilight was actually a step towards breaking that stereotype, albeit a small and quote, sad one, as Chan told Vulture. I was just trying to get a job. As long as I didn't have an accent and I didn't have to be like such a loser or a super nerd, I was like, okay, I'm willing to do this. As of 2021, Chan is still busy blending all of his talents. There are certain directors that really go into subcultures or, or lesser known stories and that's what I hope to do with my films. He told Forbes, I just feel the need to create. All aspects are incredibly fulfilling. You probably recognize Gil Birmingham as Jacob Black's father Billy in the Twilight series. Or as USA Today puts it, he's that guy you've seen in everything. Truth be told, you probably have seen Birmingham quite a bit. He has a starring role on Yellowstone, tried his hand at comedy on Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, and even developed a bromance with Jeff Bridges in the Oscar-nominated Hell or High Water. Birmingham told USA Today the pair had a quote, old married couple dynamic. But Bridges wasn't the only praise he had for the critically acclaimed project. Speaking to Cowboys and Indians, Birmingham called the film a quote, big turning point in his career, adding, if you're lucky enough to get any kind of success in this business, it's an incredible blessing because the majority of people never get it. British actor Jamie Campbell Bower tends to dominate the supernatural universe. He made his first appearance in the Twilight Saga with New Moon as Caius, a Volturi member, then reprised his role in Breaking Dawn Parts 1 and 2. Not only mixing with vamps, Bowers also dabbled in the wizarding world, as the young Gellert Grindelwald in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1, and appearing as the same young character in Fantastic Beasts The Crimes of Grindelwald. We would be remiss, however, if we also didn't mention the heartthrob's once high-profile relationship with Lily Collins. According to Elite Daily, the A-list pair met in 2012 while shooting the fantasy flick The Mortal Instruments City of Bones. On and off for a few years, the duo, quote, went on to become a good-looking couple for Gen Z shippers to fawn over. This is the part when you start tearing up pieces of shirt to bind my wounds. If you wanted me to take my clothes off, you should have just asked. They ultimately broke up in 2018, with the Emily and Paris star moving on to her current beau, Charlie McDowell. As for Campbell Bower, it looks like the actor has kept busy since his breakup and is even making more of a mainstream breakthrough. 
According to Deadline, the star is set to appear in the fourth season of Stranger Things, alongside horror legend Robert England. Julia Jones played Leah Clearwater in the Twilight series, but you've surely seen her familiar face since, as she's appeared in big-name shows like Westworld, Goliath, and The Mandalorian. Jones reconnected with her Twilight Eclipse co-star Bryce Dallas Howard for the Star Wars universe hit. In a sweet gesture after filming was complete, Jones gave a shout-out to the director, tweeting, Working with Bryce Dallas Howard again, as she directed Chapter 4 of The Mandalorian, was an experience I will cherish forever. Miraculously enough, even during a global pandemic, it looks like Jones lucked out when it came to her career. The actor explained to Whiskey and Sunshine, It's been a complete and total shift for me, at least with work and the industry, because you know nothing's filming. But I fortunately now have been working on something that is in development. So what's the project? Per deadline, Jones has found herself in yet another cult series, landing a role in the 2021 Dexter revival. Eddie Gathagy appeared in three Twilight flicks as the spooky Laurent, a vampire on the hunt for Bella Swan. Surprisingly enough, he almost didn't get a chance to play the terrifying antagonist. As the first film's director, Catherine Hardwick revealed to The Daily Beast, she spoke to author Stephanie Meyer about wanting, quote, a lot more of the cast to be diverse, noting that Meyer hadn't written it that way. Ultimately pushing for Gathagy to land the role of a vamp, Hardwick explained, The only reason that came through was he was described as having olive skin, and I said, there are black olives out there. Thankfully, it looks like Gathagy hasn't run into similar issues landing gigs in Tinseltown since. Superhero buffs may recognize him as Darwin from X-Men First Class. He's also landed a recurring role as Matthias Solomon on The Blacklist and its spin-off The Blacklist Redemption. The actor has been so busy, in fact, that he's had to balance playing different characters on different shows simultaneously. It does sometimes become a bit of a challenge. Sometimes it'll bleed into the other one and I'll have to pull back and remember who I'm playing. Can you imagine a world where Robert Pattinson didn't play Edward Cullen in the Twilight Saga? Neither can we, but that's the role Michael Welch was after before he landed the part of Mike Newton, the popular teen crushing on Bella Swan. The actor quipped to MTV, As much as I appreciate my representatives thinking that I could pull off hauntingly beautiful, the most gorgeous creature you will ever see on the planet, it's not quite me. Welch wasn't exactly a newcomer when he came on for the teen franchise. He's been acting professionally since he was 10 years old, with his first credit being an episode on the cult 90s sitcom Frasier. Since then, the actor's resume has been impressively consistent. He's also made time to start a family. Welch and his wife Samantha share two girls, and the Welch clan can adorably be seen coordinating outfits for the holidays, be it Halloween or Christmas. Riding the coattails of her success as Bella Swan, Kristen Stewart went on to star in 2012's Snow White and the Huntsman. From there, Case 2 found herself gravitating towards indie roles and out of the limelight of Hollywood. She was the first American to win the coveted French César Award for her role in Clouds of Silmaria, the equivalent to an American Oscar. As she gushed to The Hollywood Reporter, I really, really couldn't believe that they gave it to me because those people rigidly doled out praise, especially to Americans. It looks like Stewart shows no signs of slowing down. In 2020, she landed the role of Princess Diana in Pablo Lorraine's drama Spencer. As royal family expert Leslie Carroll told Fox News, Miss Stewart has a built-in fan base from her Twilight movies, so the producers may be counting on her name recognition to draw viewers. Much like Kristen Stewart, Robert Pattinson initially had some trouble shaking off his Twilight image. Even as he set his sights on indie projects that would give him some reputable cred, David Michaud, director of 2014's The Rover, ended up casting Pattinson in a major role for the film, but even he, admittedly, didn't know what to expect. I thought he was going to be some kind of teen heartthrob franchise guy, and he was not what I was expecting. Pattinson's next successful venture was 2017's Good Time, directed by the Softy Brothers. The film impressed both critics and audiences, and helped the Twilight alum further shed his brooding vampire image. Benny Softy told The Guardian, Pattinson wanted people to look at him in the movie as if he had been street cast. He wanted to disappear. And when we finally got through it and there wasn't a single cell phone picture, which is just, like, it was amazing to me. 
Johnston certainly didn't disappear. He's instead become an even bigger star, now stepping into Bruce Wayne's shoes for 2022's The Batman. When GQ asked why he took on the role, the actor quipped, what are the reasons not to do it? Taylor Lautner once famously committed to gaining 30 pounds of muscle to reprise his role as Jacob Black in the Twilight sequel New Moon, prompting teen girls everywhere to want a piece of the buff werewolf. Unfortunately, the twi hunk hasn't had the same luck shedding that image as his co-stars have. His immediate follow-up role to the blockbuster franchise was 2011's Abduction, which turned out to be a total bust. After that, things in Tinseltown turned a bit sour. As one producer told The Hollywood Reporter, Lautner's first movie just wasn't very good, and it didn't justify what he was asking for at the time. The actor then ditched his ever-declining Hollywood wolf pack and swam across the pond, into the dry land of English humor. Taking over for Andy Samberg in the BBC3 comedy series Cuckoo, Lautner proved that he is, in fact, a pretty funny guy. And you spent six months working for... The triads, right? <laughs> They're an international criminal organization specializing in drug smuggling and extortion. These days, I'm a childminder." As The Telegraph reported, fans wondered how the Twilight alum would fare. The answer is brilliantly. Lautner finally left the series at the end of 2018, although he admitted not all goodbyes are forever. Peter Facinelli saw steady work as an actor after his time as Cullen Clan patriarch Carlisle came to an end. The actor took on a guest role on Fox's musical comedy show Glee in 2013, revealing to Hollywood life that the fan base was pretty similar to that of the Vampire series. Now I have a connection with Glee fans. It's like a crossover for Glee and Twilight fans. Learning how to appeal to his younger fan base, Facinelli braved forward in 2015, finding work on CW Supergirl. His next move? Stepping behind the camera for 2018's Breaking and Exiting. The actor-turned-director admitted to The Hollywood Reporter that the experience was, quote, nerve-wracking, saying, "...when you're an actor and you go to a screening, you sit there and you think, wow, I hope people like my performance. And with this movie, everything falls on me." Pivoting yet again during the COVID-19 pandemic, Facinelli turned his sights to a new hobby, hypnotherapy, revealing to E, "...I'm actually certified now in hypnotherapy." I'm not going to be doing it professionally, but I wanted to do it more for myself." Elizabeth Reeser refuses to give up all things spooky and grim. After her turn as Esme Cullen in Twilight, the star appeared in 2017's Manhunt Unabomber, based on the disturbing true story of convicted domestic terrorist Ted Kaczynski. Speaking to Movie Phone, the actor gushed about her love of darker projects saying that she gets, quote, "...really sort of sucked into anything true crime." Reezer also admitted to perhaps being slightly typecast for darker roles because of her face, saying, "...it seems sad or serious or something. People just don't see me unless they know me. They don't see me as a funny person." Lucky for the Twilight alum, that brooding face booked her gigs. In 2018, she joined Netflix's creepy hit The Haunting of Hill House, playing mortician Shirley Crane. Freezer called her character, quote, "...unapologetically angry in an interview with Sci-Fi, saying, "...it was really fun to play. I just loved that about her." As it turns out, the macabre just works for her. In 2019, Freezer appeared in The Handmaid's Tale for three episodes as Olivia Winslow, yet another brooding character. After playing Alice Cullen throughout the Twilight series, Ashley Green continued to work in Hollywood, landing supporting roles in several Hollywood productions. In 2018, the actor traversed across the pond for a lead role alongside Scott Adkins in the English action crime flick Accident Man, based on a character from the 90s UK comic Toxic. A year later, Green returned to America to join the cast of YouTube's Step Up Highwater. Her role in the show was definitely a far cry from the sweet and lovable Alice. I get to basically just be catty and sassy. I mean, she's she's not evil, but I think she definitely knows what she wants, goes after it. As for her personal life, Green married Paul Corey in 2018, although the couple is in no rush to have kids. The actor told Us Weekly in 2020, we're not having kids in the near, near future. Before we have children, I just want to kind of get certain things set and implement certain things into our lifestyle now." Jackson Rathbone has dabbled in many different ventures since playing Jasper Hill in his Twilight days. 
but he has no delusions about where all of that good career fortune is rooted. Opening up to Newsweek, the actor said, I get to be selective now because I have a fairly good career after Twilight. Twilight really brought me into worldwide recognition. Since the saga, Rathbone has definitely picked meaningful roles, including starring in 2017's true story Heart Baby. The actor played Doc, a songwriter and fellow prisoner to George Lee Martin, a boxer who was offered the opportunity at Freedom in exchange for fighting at the 1984 Olympic Games. Along with admitting that the role truly taught him the meaning of forgiveness, Rathbone must have jumped at the opportunity to play a musician, considering that's another medium in which he's had success. Heartwarmingly enough, the actor revealed to the Post that he stayed in touch with some of his Twilight castmates due to the COVID-19 pandemic, saying, We all have had a big text chain recently, you know, seeing if we can kind of pull together and help out in some way. After playing Emmett, the most intimidating member of the Cullen clan, Helen Lutz landed even more burly Hollywood roles. And really, are we surprised? He flexed his cartoon muscles in 2013 for a 3D rendition of Tarzan, although the actor revealed that he still had to be in peak physical form for the role. According to Lutz, the motion capture involved, quote, a lot of jumping, climbing, fighting, and other physical work wearing a skin-tight suit. Now, I knew it was motion capture, but I didn't really know what that meant. After hanging up his animated loincloth, Lutz took on another heroic character as the titular star of 2014's The Legend of Hercules. Although the typecasting is clearly evident, the star doesn't mind. Speaking to Reuters, Lutz explained, If everyone saw me as an action guy and gave me action movie after action movie, I'd be fine with it. It's one of those great genres that you always have fun doing. The actor also mentioned, however, that he'd love to have a career like Matt Damon's, doing both drama and comedies as well as action flicks. Lutz now has another major role off-camera that he'll have to flex his muscles for, carrying a newborn. In February 2021, the actor and his wife Brittany welcomed a baby girl. Not all of the Twilight alums continued with a streak of successful Hollywood flicks. Nikki Reed, the alluring Rosalie Hale of the Cullen clan, unfortunately found herself in a string of flops, causing her to get crafty with her success. The solution? Recycling computer motherboards. Wait, what? Her people, the actor-turned-designer started her own sustainable lifestyle brand, Bayou with Love, where she has collaborated with Dell to quote, extract gold and precious materials from computer motherboards and recycle them into jewelry. According to Reed, the idea is to take what people would literally consider trash and to mix it with luxury. It's beautiful to see what can happen when you repurpose something and give it a new story. This idea that we can somehow marry technology with sustainability is, if you ask me, the future. The star also has become an ambassador for the plant-based baby food delivery service Raised Real. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Reed was inspired to work with the brand thanks to her baby daughter Bodhi. So how does the star try to unwind when she's this busy? Reed revealed to C Magazine, I have quiet time with a cup or two of tea every morning. I try to take that time to set up my day, get organized, and stay grateful. Billy Burt continued tackling moody projects since playing Bella Swan's dad, Charlie Swan, in the Twilight flicks. He had a recurring role as a scientist in the 2015 CBS action thriller Zoo, and in 2016, he co-starred in the well-received horror film Lights Out. Burt changed gears in 2018, playing an absolutely terrifying villain opposite Gabrielle Union in the thriller Breaking In. During an appearance on KTLA 5, the actor admitted it was fun to play a bad guy, something he hadn't done for some time. I spent the first good portion of my career, um, I think, getting gigs because of my ability to grow facial hair and sneer. Burke is next set to star in the Netflix dramedy series Made as a contractor and former alcoholic who denies his dark past after finding religion. Cam Gigande shot to fame playing the guy everyone loved to hate, both in the Twilight series and the teen hit The O.C. Hanging up his villainous cape in 2014, the actor then starred in the short-lived CBS legal drama Reckless, playing a divorced father of two attorney. Gigande revealed to Collider that he likes, quote, having that balance between playing both bad guys and good. 
After Reckless got cancelled, he took on a role in the AT&T original series Ice, which lasted from 2016 to 2018 and was unfortunately met with lackluster reviews. A more reserved dude in real life, it turns out Shigande isn't really in touch with most people he's acted with in the past. Although the celeb has kept mum about his Twilight castmates, he hasn't had the most amicable things to say about some other former A-listers. Opening up to L, the actor dished about his not-so-great time on the OC, saying, "...the things that I remember now, none of them are good. Those kids were f miserable. They were young. That said, I don't talk to anyone I've ever worked with." In 2020, he had a chance to star alongside another teen icon, Riverdale's Camila Mendez for the Netflix thriller Dangerous Lies. Anna Kendrick has done so well for herself post-Twilight that she even tweeted she forgot she was ever in the series. Okay, the girls got jokes. But the bubbly star has certainly kept busy since the franchise, landing a slew of film credits, most notably the Pitch Perfect flicks. In 2020, the star took Vanity Fair down memory lane, and when it came to chatting Twilight, Kendrick recalled that she felt, quote, so cold and miserable filming in Oregon. It was also kind of bonding. Like, you imagine, like, people who survive, like, a hostage situation, <laughs> um, and you're kind of bonded for life. We're not sure if comparing Twilight to surviving a hostage situation is exactly accurate, but to each their own. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite celebs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.